Thank you. It's right this way. Thank you. Angela, we have Mimi to see you. Hey, girl. You're so beautiful. Oh, thank you. Hey, hey you. looking like you on your way to the Grammys. <laughs> Since writing my book, so many people have come to me asking me for help to help them write their stories. And today I'm meeting with the client, lovely Mimi. I'm excited to learn about what she wants to write a book about. How's the husband and the kids? Uh, they're awesome. You know, Atlanta been treating me good. I've only been out here for a year. How do you stay, like, I guess, positive with in your relationship with your husband? Hey, relationships are never going to be easy. You're going to have your ups and your downs. And I've been with my husband for eight years, and I just realized that if you both are on the same page, you dedicate yourself and you don't lie. That's yes. the only way it's going to work. Yes. And both people have to be on the same side. Now, there's days that it don't work out. We fight, we argue, whatever. And I think that's with any relationship, whether it's in a relationship with your mm -hmm. kids, if it's in a relationship with your friends, or even your parents sometimes. Mm -hmm. You don't always get along. But I guess it's coming to that common ground mm -hmm. at some point and saying, hey, we're going to make this work. Then don't think too much. Don't yeah. think too much. Don't overthink. overthink. People think way too deep about nothing. They ain't got nothing to do with anything. You just start right. thinking, and it makes you crazy. Yeah. I didn't never think I'd find a man that would think I was good enough to marry because I had such a checkered right. past. I had been molested, I had been raped, I had five children by five different men. I had made all of these past mistakes. I just didn't think that I was worthy enough. And I had finally found somebody, girl. Oh, I'm talking yay. about love me, yes. And so I know you and your husband have been together for a while. Like, yes, how do I keep it burning or? I don't know, sometimes I get a little dry, but <laughs> spit some water on it, spit on it. Light it back up. <laughs> Make it wet. <laughs> the thing that I love about lovely Mimi is her authentic personality. One thing I've always respected is real and people that are happy with who they are. Tell me a little bit about what your book is going to be about. You know, race has always been a big topic in my life, you know, because I am Vietnamese. I'm raised in a Vietnamese household. I was born in Vietnam. My mother worked for babies at $10 a kid for a whole day. Where we're from, we're from a village. We're from a straw house. We're from no shoes. My mother and father, we're from the war. They got blown up to the point where we, we can't, in America, we can't even appreciate religion to we have freedom of religion here to where my father was actually a pastor and actually got beat if he ever got caught speaking the word of God. I want all of that in your book. I don't think people really understand. You weren't born with the spoon in your mouth. You know what I'm saying? No, because there's all. a saying that says. I didn't says, get my first pair of jeans till third grade. See <laughs> what I'm saying? Store. First pair of jeans. <laughs> Who would have thought that? Who would have imagined that?